a new episode of MT5 and today it's about the Catch the Snitch a Wizard Sport board game. Enjoy! This is Marcel and this is my first video about the Catch the Snitch board game. I usually do uh, some tabletops and board games as well and I got this as a Kickstarter and because there are very limited resources in the internet about this game I thought it would be good to record some uh, basic videos and maybe explore it a bit more. This is my first video recorded as an actual board game and not just on a tabletop simulator and simulator. So I'm still working on my setup for recording. So comments are very much appreciated. And it's also my first uh, video that I can remember. I record in English. Um, I think the player base, because it's only on Kickstarter, or was only on Kickstarter, is uh, small at the moment and uh, my the other videos on my channel are in German so don't get confused this uh, cat the snitch I will do um, the first ones at least in English so that I can uh, reach a broader viewership in this video I want to uh, give you an overview over the basic gameplay elements which are the seven players per team the tactical cards, the snitch race, and uh, the spectator board. Start with the players. There are seven players per team. Three are chasers, which pass the quaffle and try to score goals uh, in those uh, three rings at the uh, opposite sides of the board. And they are hindered by the other three players which uh, play on the board, which is one keeper per team, which is in the scoring area, trying to hinder them while shooting, and the two beaters, which uh, beat the bludgers and try to hit them with it, which will lead to losing the quaffle or simply making them uh, worse for the rest of the game, because they are stunned. The last player per team is the most important, but doesn't play on the field, but uh, on the yellow race around it. It's the seeker and the seeker tries to catch the golden snitch, which is also the way to win the game. Each player's abilities are represented by the corresponding player card. Uh, they got little dice icons for the actions that the players can take. And we have similar colored dice, so it's pretty easy if you want to do a pass action, you would uh, look, there is one orange and two black dice, so you take one orange and two black dice and roll. Um, if you do an action, you look for quaffles on the dice, or successes as they are called, and uh, with specific actions like shoot or steal, your opponent can do a reaction and um, then they are looking for the uh, sticks <laughs> or opportunities, as they are called in the book. And um, you basically are successful with your action if after subtracting those opportunities from uh, the which your opponent wrote from the uh, successes you wrote, there is at least one success remaining and um, then you get uh, the effect of the pass, shoot, or steal or so on. Additionally, each player got a trait. Uh, usually all the uh, basic players uh, the same trait for each position on one house, so all uh, Slytherin chasers have the, the trait you see here, and uh, all Ravenclaw chasers got a different trait, but all Ravenclaw got the same trait as uh, any other Ravenclaw chaser. I'm gonna explain all the actions and reactions in another video, which uh, maybe will be linked here in the future. Now we are gonna move on and uh, I'm gonna explain to you how you get actions so that you can do all those amazing things with your players on the field. And that leads us to the tactical cards. 
Each house got an individual tactical deck with 15 tactical cards, which are all unique. And you can, uh, if you uh, dive deeper into the game, um, add additional cards, uh, paying galleons and um, individualize your deck this way. But for now, we are gonna look at those uh, zero point cards, a set of 15 unique cards. And first we are gonna look at the upper side. There are three so-called action blocks per card and each action block has a number from zero to two of actions, which are visualized by um, those players in them. So we got one action in this action block, zero in this and two in this action block. At the start of each game sequence, which would be considered a round in other games, uh, you decide to play one tactical card from your hand and your opponent does so as well in secret and then you both reveal them and starting with the attacking player you alternate resolving your actions blocks getting the uh, actions that are shown in the action block. So if we say uh, Ravenclaw player starts with these two tactical cards the Ravenclaw player would resolve one action, then the Slytherin player would resolve one action, then the Ravenclaw player would get no action and the Slytherin would get two actions, which would lead to having three actions in a row. And after this, the Ravenclaw player would get another two actions. Each tactic card has a so-called intrepid move uh, which is uh, the text on the tactical card. For the first tactical card that you play, you simply ignore it and it's just about the action blocks. But you can play up to two additional tactical cards, which then ignore the action blocks and are only for the effects that are stated on the card and called intrepid moves. You start your game with five tactic cards in your hand and there are a lot of effects that can uh, make you draw new cards or uh, collect cards from your discard pile or even make your opponent discard cards and this is uh, important because if you're out of cards you have to draw five new ones but your opponent gets um, a lot of benefits if you do so. So it's always important to think about whether you want to use your cards as intrepid moves or not. And stuff, all those uh, actions and scoring and tactical cards you do with the six players which are actually uh, on the field are just to get you some snitch cards. There are three ways you collect the snitch cards. One is by completing actions with the rules successfully and uh, getting so-called tempo tokens. And if you get four, you get a snitch card. If you score a goal, you get a snitch card immediately. And at the end of each uh, game sequence, you get a snitch card for free. The snitch cards help your seekers on the snitch race, which is uh, the yellow track around uh, the court and uh, are the way to win the game to remember you win the game if you catch the snitch. There are effects on the snitch cards which will be explained in a, another video but basically you advance your seeker a few uh, spaces on the snitch race or you um, obstruct your seeker by uh, moving them back or you get the snitch to get nearer to the snitch uh, to the seekers on the other direction. When you get a snitch card, you can decide whether you want to take a little effect immediately or whether you want to keep one card as your card in play and then combine it with the next snitch card you get to get a stronger effect. The last thing I want to show you is the spectator stand. 
each team gets a fervent spectator, which is uh, symbolized by this little token in yeah, black or white for free. They grant you rerolls for your rolls, and depending on whether there is a, another spectator on the board already, you get uh, the weaker effect or the stronger. It's always better if your opponent already use the spectator and it's already on the stand and uh, you kick them off, then you get the stronger effect on the button. Also included in the core game are Snape and Hermione and in the Kickstarter there were like 20 some other spectators or with unique effects which can also board for your team by galleons. Those were the four basic gameplay elements that are used in the Catch the Stitch board game. And to summarize, uh, the six players of each team, three chasers, two beaters, one keeper, move across the board, uh, pass the coffee, beat the bludgers, all trying to score goals and get snitch cards. And the snitch cards uh, are either cashed in immediately uh, or combined with the next snitch card to then move your seeker on the snitch race track, which is around the playing area. The tactical cards are a very important resource doing so because they determine which or how many and in which order you uh, resolve your actions on the field and also can grant very strong intrepid moves. And the spectators are an additional mechanic which support your players on the field. I already played some games and I have to say that I really like the game. It really captures the feeling of Quidditch. It is after you know the roots uh, by heart. Um, a really quick game and uh, here it's just flavorful with passing the quaffle, beating the plutchers, hoping you hit and uh, sometimes your keeper will catch um, against all odds and it's really really cool. So I hope you like this video and get an idea on how this uh, game plays. If you got any questions uh, just comment and I hope I can answer them in future videos. For now, if you have the game, enjoy it and if you not have it, maybe you can uh, find it if you liked it on this video and um, buy it from someone who bought it on the Kickstarter or maybe bought additional copies and I hope it will hit retail soon. For now, please enjoy the game.